Hey guys, Josh with Metal in Motion, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to do a compression test. Okay, so what does a compression test do? Well, a compression test tests how well all the components are sealing. So you typically on a small engine have two valves, an intake valve and an exhaust valve, and they have a seat. And that seat can get carbon buildup on it, it can uh, get burned, and that will prevent it from sealing. When the valve closes, it's not fully sealing. It's allowing air and combustion to escape past the, uh, the seat. Okay, also you've got a piston. The piston's got rings all down the side called compression rings. And they are perfectly machined to seal the cylinder that the piston travels up and down in. All right, as the engine gets wore out, those rings will get bad. And as those rings get bad, not only do you lose the ability to uh, compress and draw in air because that, that seal has been lost. It's not sucking air in quite as well and it's not able to compress it. But on top of that, you start getting oil that is allowed to escape past the rings. Plug, we take the spark plug out, screw this into the spark plug hole. We uh, typically take the air filter off. We, don't, we wanna remove any of the obstructions in the uh, intake. So we wanna be able to draw in as much air as we can. And when you crank the engine over several times, typically we'll crank it until the needle stops and then we'll read the compression. Okay, and what this does is tells you the overall ability of the engine to build up compression and hold compression. Uh, how well, how airtight is the engine? If we can, we wanna run it on a warm engine. Okay, but a lot of the stuff I get in here doesn't start. So um, I'm forced to run it on a cold engine, which is gonna give me a lower reading. I prefer to use a compression tester on my two stroke engines. For my four stroke engine, I use a leak down test as the compression release mechanism on the camshaft of many riding mower engines gives me a lower reading than it should. As, as the piston and the rings uh, heat up, they expand and they actually create a better seal when they're warm. We're gonna perform a dry compression test first, then we're gonna go back and perform a wet compression test. Now a wet compression test is taking uh, and sticking a tablespoon of oil down the spark plug hole and pumping the engine over a couple times to disperse that oil to let it uh, you know, kind of coat the, the cylinder walls and redoing the compression test. Now, if the compression goes higher, say 20, 30, 40 PSI higher, then we can conclude that our piston rings are probably worn out. Um, if it does not go any higher, say it only bumps up five PSI, then we can say that our piston rings are sealing fine. We probably have a problem either in the valves. The valves are not seating and therefore they're letting some of that compression uh, slip out around their seats or we've got a blown head gasket. But uh, let's get on with this. Let me show you how to perform this test. So the first thing we wanna do is remove the spark plug. Once we have the spark plug removed, we can go ahead and thread in the compression tester. Now the hose comes off of the compression tester so you can just remove the hose off the gauge thread in the hose, and then you can put the, the gauge on the end of the hose when you're finished threading it in. Now that we have the gauge installed, we want to remove the air filter and the air filter cover, and we want to, if possible, turn the throttle to wide open throttle. That way the butterflies are open and there's nothing restricting the intake so that the engine can suck in the most amount of air that it can. If we perform this test with the air filter in and the throttle down, it can give us a faulty reading. And this would lead us to the conclusion that our engine is not as healthy as it should be. One thing we want to remember, if possible, leave the, the key switch off. Now that's going to work for things like blowers and chainsaws. Uh, this pressure washer has a, a switch on it. Uh, things like riding mowers, you're actually going to be using the key switch because you're going to be cranking the engine over. So therefore you want to make sure that your spark plug is moved out of the way uh, in a safe place that's not going to cause any kind of uh, problem. Once we have the air filter out and the throttle open, pull the engine over until the needle stops moving on the gauge. As you're pulling the rope on the engine and watching the gauge, the, the gauge should be climbing quickly and consistently with each stroke. If you find that it's not moving very much and it's taking a lot of strokes to get that pressure to, to finally build up, we might have an engine problem. Typically, you should pull the rope five to 10 times and the needle should stop moving on the gauge. As you can see, when we did the compression test on this Kohler XT7, it was very low. I actually wasn't expecting that at all. Uh, this pressure washer actually came in saying that the pump uh, pretty much exploded. It was leaking oil everywhere. 
but the motor was running fine. So now obviously this engine is cold. Um, so the compression reading is gonna be lower, but as you can see in this next clip, uh, an average compression reading is somewhere between 80 and 120, 85 PSI to 120 PSI. That's about normal for push mowers, uh, riding mowers, um, things like that. Sometimes it'll be over 120 and that's fine too. Um, but anything below like 60, 50, in my opinion, that's getting kind of low. So what we're gonna do next is do a wet test and we're gonna put about a tablespoon of oil down the spark plug hole. We'll pull the engine over just a time or two to kind of disperse that oil on the cylinder walls and then we'll do the compression test again and we'll see if the compression readings change. Now, if the compression readings change and that tells us we probably have some scratches in our cylinder wall and that oil is temporarily filling those scratches which is giving us a bump in compression. If there is no change in compression, then that tells us it's probably either a head gasket, which is probably not very likely, or it's probably our valves. Or it can be the valve timing. A lot of the Honda, like the GC, I think it's the 160s and stuff, they run that little uh, timing belt up to the overhead camshaft, and that timing belt can break, or the camshaft can, uh, I've seen the, the plastic camshaft actually wear the lobes off of it. So somehow, you know, some type of, of cam timing, um, can affect the compression readings because your valves are not opening and closing when they should be and therefore when they're supposed to be closed they're open and they're letting some of that compression leak out. Wow, I did not expect those results. So when I put about a tablespoon of oil in the cylinder and you've seen that we re-pulled uh, the string, you know, six, seven, eight times what it was to, uh, to get that needle to stop moving, uh, it climbed all the way up to like 75, 80-ish right through there, which was pretty much on par with what we were finding in the three and a half horse Briggs, the five horse Briggs, and the 8.75 Craftsman uh, engine back here. All of them were pretty much right around that that 80, 90 mark cold. So as they warm up, they'll probably climb up a little bit more than that. But you can see we started off with something like 30 PSI. And by adding that oil, we doubled that. We jumped all the way up to 75, 80, something like that. So generally speaking, four strokes typically run somewhere around, you know, 85 to 120 PSI. And two strokes, like your chainsaws and your blowers, I do not like to work on anything that's less than like 110 PSI. A two-stroke technically will run on 90 PSI, and I have had some steels like the FS94s and stuff like that that will run on like 94, 95 PSI, and they ran fine. Um, but typically, anything under like 110 PSI doesn't want to idle very good. It starts to become hard starting, and so I usually move on at that point. And uh, good luck doing your test. Stay tuned for the next video where we're going to show you how to do a leak down test. I'm Josh with Metal in Motion. We'll catch you next time.